Prepare to discard your mental blinders. Counterthink with Mike Adams, live on InfoWars.com. You are watching Counterthink. Thank you for joining me again. This is Mike Adams, your host. Counterthink airs every Sunday, 6 p.m. at InfoWars.com. That's Central Time. We also post the episodes at Counterthink.com. They're also in the, um, the InfoWars archives of various video platforms. I want to thank you for joining me today. We're going to be covering climate change, the greatest science hoax in human civilization. We'll be interviewing Mark Morano. He is, of course, the creator of ClimateDepot.com, and he's the author of a best-selling book called The Politically Incorrect Guide to Climate Change. He has been, of course, viciously attacked, smeared, death-threaded, uh, silenced, suppressed, censored, deplatformed, uh, everything else you can think of, to try to shut him up and prevent him from talking about the things that we are talking about today. Now, a little bit of background in case this is the first time you've watched this show. This is a relatively new show. It's doing very well. The feedback has been tremendously positive. This is part of the expansion of the InfoWars News Network. I come in as a guest here, essentially a guest host for this show, sit down in the InfoWars studio. This is where Alex Jones films his shows and does his daily broadcast. And I give you a little bit of a different perspective on things. This is kind of a magazine format show that looks at issues that may maybe aren't breaking today in terms of current events, but they do impact us all in very important ways and, and huge ways, really, that, that affect us for generations. Climate change is one of those issues. Just remember the background here. First, a couple of decades ago, they said there was global cooling and that we were all going to freeze to death on this giant ice ball caused by the pollution from coal-fired power plants. And if you go back to Time magazine covers and other magazines from uh, the 1970s, usually late 70s and early 80s, we were told that yeah, it's going to be a giant ice ball. The next ice age is coming. Global cooling is almost here. Watch out. We're all going to die. Well, and then, of course, they shifted the narrative. They decided that uh, uh, it's going to be global warming. Oh, yeah, there's a Time magazine cover. It says, be worried, be very worried. And another Time magazine cover from 1977 says, how to survive the coming ice age. But fast forward to 2006, now it's global warming. So it was global warming throughout uh, about the late 1990s through the, the 2000s, the early 2000s and so on. And then they found out, well, the global warming predictions are not that accurate. It's not really working out the way that we were told it was going to. Now, they, they count on the fact that most people don't have a memory, right? They, they hope that you forget what they said two years ago or certainly two decades ago. And that way they were able to try to sell it. But they couldn't quite pull that off because people remembered that, hey, it's not warming like we were told it was going to. So instead, they decided to shift over to climate change because climate change is always happening, and it has always happened throughout the history of our planet, long before humans were ever here, long before the invention of the combustion engine, and long before CO2 levels moved down or up or whatever they say is causing the problem right now. Technically, they're some of the lowest levels we've seen in the history of the planet. CO2 levels used to be over 10 times higher than they are today, which is barely above 400 parts per million, which is a very tiny percentage of the atmosphere, by the way. But they want us to believe that this is now a threat to all life on our planet, and they've called it climate change. Well, the climate is always changing. There are always tornadoes and hurricanes and storms, and there are droughts and there are floods, and these have happened throughout history, the history of the planet, not just the history of human beings. And there was climate change before the combustion engine was invented. There was climate change before fossil fuels. There was climate change before coal-fired power plants were ever invented or constructed or used. So what is this really all about then? What is actually the truth about climate change? That's what we're here to try to find out today, talking with Mark Moreno in the, the thir third segment coming up today. I'm going to cover some news after we come back from this break. I'm going to cover some news about how the software models are breaking down, how we're all being lied to, why you shouldn't believe the status quo when it comes to so-called climate change. And we'll ask some tough questions. This is Counterthink with Mike Adams. We'll do all that when we come back after this break. Do not miss this interview with Mark Morano. You're going to love it. He's the creator of ClimateDepot.com. Stay with us. We'll be right back here at InfoWars.com.
Take the red pill before viewing. Counterthink with Mike Adams. Hey, that's a cool new liner that we have going there. <laughs> there I love all the graphics and the production that are contributing to this show. Welcome to Counterthink. This is Mike Adams here. We Today we're talking about climate change and, you know, Mark Moran is our guest coming up in the next segment. I'm going to cover some news headlines right now of some, some of the breaking news that's happening around this subject. But I just got to say, you know, thank you for your support. Thank you for supporting this network and my show here in particular. Be sure to share the episodes. And if you really want to help support the infrastructure that makes this possible, it's the InfoWars infrastructure. And you can purchase many, many high-end nutritional products at InfoWarsStore.com. I can't tell you what specials are running right now because uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, and they change all the time. But they always have specials. They always have great deals. InfoWarsStore.com helps support this system. You can also watch live streams of other shows at InfoWars.com slash show. So th there are more shows being launched, more guests who are going to be doing similar things like what I'm doing right here. Uh, the idea that Alex has is to, is to expand the number of voices, you know, different, different kind of uh, shows, different interviews, different people, different hosts. And this show, Counterthink, is all part of that because, let's, let's face it, we are the new media, right? We are the new media as the old guard legacy media is crumbling and imploding. The new media, which asks real questions, real journalism, is rising up. And I'm thrilled to be part of it. I'm honored to be part of it here at InfoWars. So please uh, help support our mission. Now, getting into some of the headlines, Check this out. Now, I'm going to be quoting a couple of websites here. One is climatedepot.com, which is the website of our upcoming guest, Mark Morano. Also, climate.news, which is a site that I publish along with others like science.news and so on. Uh, we, we cover the climate science debate, you might say, and some of the failures of the, the climate software models at climate.news. So that is a worthy website to check out. It's not a, as... It's not published as frequently as climatedepot.com, by the way. So Climate Depot really nails it. We just kind of cover the basics at climate.news. But check this out. Climate change hoax is now starting to crumble as scientists admit that the doom projections were completely wrong. It turns out that the simulations, the software simulations that we have been told by the IPCC, that the Intergovernmental Panel, uh, Panel on Climate Change, those software models have been bogus. They knew it. They did it on purpose. It's deliberate. They've had software models where whatever data you feed into the system, it produces a hockey stick, stick kind of shape, an alarmist kind of outcome. You can put random data into that system, and it's, it's rigged. In, in other words, it's so rigged, it's so fraudulent that it produces this alarming kind of uh, outcome no matter what you do. Uh, the NOAA. Caught again altering temperature data to exaggerate the global warming hoax. That's another headline on climate.news. They've overestimated the future impact of climate change by between 30 and 45 percent, according to a new study by Curry and Lewis. Well, it's not, it's not that new, but it's within the last couple of years. They've said that the, the future warming is likely to be substantially lower than the central computer model simulated level projected by the IPCC. In other words, we have been sold a bill of goods by a bunch of alarmists who are rigging a bunch of computer software to produce false outcomes, false projections. And this is why so much of the climate change hysteria has not come true. If you look at the predictions from Al Gore, for example, starting, I don't know, I think in, in the late 1990s, those pre predictions of how you know we'd all be underwater, and there, there wouldn't be uh, ice at the poles anymore and all these things. None of them have come true. And all these, these ships that are going on, you know, global warming or, or climate change missions, they keep getting stuck in uh, uh, the ice at the North Pole. And it's like, huh, how can that be if, if global warming is so bad that it's supposed to be melting everything? And by the way, what's so wrong with having... Water in the form of water, liquid water, which supports life and supports oceans and rainforests and so on, rather than locked up in ice, which is lifeless, essentially. You know, why do you want to have a cold planet, that, a frozen ice ball planet, instead of a warm, lush, green planet? It turns out that melting the ice and having more liquid water is more green. Don't you want the planet to be green? <laughs> I sure do. Uh, back to climatedepot.com. The politically incorrect book uh, guide to climate change sold out at Amazon, Target, and Walmart at first. 
and is now in its third printing edi edition. It was ranked as a bestseller, and that's despite all the efforts to attack the book and try to attack the author, Mark Morano. Uh, he and I share this in common. We're both journalists talking about science. We've both written books that have done very, very well uh, in, in the realm of science, and of course we both get attacked for daring to ask questions. Check this out. There's a new study that was published in the Journal of Environmental Psychology. It found that those people who consider themselves to be climate, uh, you know, climate change alarmists or, or people who are concerned about the climate, they, they actually have poor habits and they destroy the climate and they destroy local ecosystems more than people who are so-called skeptics of that system. There's a study on, or I'm sorry, an article at Infowars.com. And it says that a new study has exposed how leftists, they value their virtue signaling instead of action. And it turns out that people who express skepticism about global warming actually care for the environment more consistently. They're more compassionate people. They're more intelligent people. And they actually pick up their trash, for example. When you go out and you look at the protests of these uh, you know, climate change pushers and they're protesting pipelines and they're protesting power plants, they always leave all these mountains of trash behind. You ever notice that? It's just trash everywhere. They trash the place. It's like, I thought you were supposed to be pro-environment. Why are you trashing every protest location that you go to? You set up these tents, and then they become almost like shantytown tent cities, and there's trash everywhere, and people are getting raped in the tents at some of these, like, like Occupy Wall Street type of events, which are some of the same people, by the way. It's crazy. <laughs> you know, if you care for the planet, maybe don't trash it every time you run a protest. Just, it's just a thought. So Mark Morano's book, The Politically Incorrect Guide to Climate Change, is it's described as a point-by-point -point takedown of global warming nonsense. It has uh, sold very well, of course, as I mentioned, but in it, Mark Morano understands a very crucial point. This is about taking away your freedom. This is about enslaving you in a system of science tyranny, or what you might call scientific authoritarianism, that's designed to take away your ability to function as a free citizen in a free society. And in response to publishing this book and working on documentaries and other things that Mark Moreno has done over the last few years, he gets death threatened by insane, crazy people who threaten to kill him. They send him nasty emails. They say, mother effer, go to hell. People like you should die. <laughs> I mean, these are, the, these are the greenies, really? These are the uh, supposed to be the compassionate recycling advocates who love the planet, they're hugging trees, but they want to stab Mark Morano in the heart. Go to hell, uh, your children should burn in public, <laughs> that's what they say. It's, this, this is really juicy stuff. You know, go, go F yourself, you're one of the biggest, quote, a-holes on planet Earth to doom every living ecosystem. This is the kind of stuff that they say to Mark Morano because they hate CO2. Well, I got news for all those climate change uh, alarmists. If you didn't have CO2, you would be dead already because CO2 is the nutrient for plants. Without CO2 in the atmosphere, you don't have plants. And if the plants collapse, the entire ecosystem collapses. The animals collapse. The food web collapses. And human life collapses. So the only reason you're alive today is because there is a little bit of CO2 in the atmosphere. We could use some more, frankly. It's a little over 400 parts per million right now. Wouldn't be bad if it were at 450, frankly. We could use a lot more, and then we would have more lush rainforests, more food production. We could end starvation in many countries because food production would be easier. Carbon dioxide is a key nutrient. Car carbon dioxide is a gift to mankind. It is a gift to the natural world. It is the greening molecule for our planet. And if you don't understand that, then, you know, all you can do is resort to, to calling people like Mark Morano you know, mother effers, a-holes, and hoping their children burn in public because you don't understand science. You don't understand reality, logic, reason, evidence, history, nothing. All you can do is, is attack people who are trying to educate you and trying to tell you that you don't have to panic. We're not all going to die. And in fact, CO2 is good for the planet. So we'll be back after this break and actually interview Mark Morano, and I'll ask him some of these questions. And this is going to be fascinating, so stay tuned. This is Counter Thing here on Infowars.com. My name is Mike Adams. Interview with Mark Morano coming right up. Stay with us. Counter 
Countering the brain dead propaganda of the status quo. This is Counterthink with Mike Adams, right here on InfoWars. Welcome back to Counterthink. My name is Mike Adams. I'm your host. And in this segment today, we're joined by Mark Morano, who is, of course, the creator of ClimateDepot.com. He's also the author of a book that's been selling extraordinarily well. It's called The Politically Incorrect Guide to Climate Change. I think I've got the right title there. He joins us by Skype video to discuss the attacks on uh, his book and his voice for daring, just daring to ask critical thinking questions about the so-called science behind so-called climate change. And the show is counterthink, and that's what we do is we're going to counter the thinking of those that we, we don't think are thinking very clearly. So, Mark, welcome to the show. It's great to have you on. Thank you very much, Mike. Happy to be here. Uh, it's a refreshing change because the, the mainstream media has long ago, as you know, punted on this issue. They won't even allow skeptical voices now, the L.A. Times won't even print a letter to the editor if it challenges the U.N. or Al Gore. Well, that's extraordinary, and, and you're exactly right. It brings up the question of how can they call it science if they're not adhering to the scientific process, which must allow for questioning of a scientific theory, and that you have to consider evidence that contradicts the current status quo thinking, and yet the, client, the, the climate change so-called scientists they're run almost like a like a like a racket where if you if you don't agree with what they're saying then uh, you're not allowed to have a voice at all absolutely in fact uh, in my book i profile scientists who stood who actually believed in the consensus before re-examined the evidence and then came out as a skeptic one of them was dr judith curry uh climatologist from georgia tech head of the entire department she was called a heretic by Scientific American, the, the, the major newspaper, the major magazine publication, and it actually referred to it as a heretic. These are the language of religion. They referred to it as dogma. The head of the UN climate panel actually said, quote, global warming is my religion, unquote. Right. So this is very far removed from a scientific issue. Well, let's, let's step back a little bit, and I, I'd like you to cover some of the big ahas uh, about yep. cli uh, climate change and global warming. And let me just uh, global warning, warming. Gosh, I, I keep I keep mispronouncing that. Um, let me give you a hint here. Some of them are that the software models that are being used by the IPCC have been shown to be overly pessimistic, and the actual warming is considerably less than what the software models indicate. We've also seen, of course, funding is restricted uh, to those who might be skeptical of the the climate change you know narrative. What are what are some of the big points that people might take away from your book or from your work at climatedepot.com? Okay, I'll, I'll make this, I, I try to make the book entertaining, number one. So I have a lot of fun in this book. I talk about how global warming created Hitler, global warming saved Hitler. Uh, and I go back to 1941, a University of Cincinnati professor during the warming of the 1920s, 30s into the 40s, they were worried that that warm weather was making people more docile and easily led, thus, and they actually said, thus leading them to be more willing to follow Mussolini and Hitler. And then, of course, there was a heat wave that ultimately saved Hitler's life because they had to move the room the day of his assassination. So I get into a lot of wacky stuff, but... <laughs> You're not kidding. This, this, yeah, this, this is just how I'd say this goes back decades. I go back, to the, I go back to the early 19th century, 1817, I believe, where people blame the introduction, the indigenous people blame the introduction, the change in weather on the introduction of the white man in Australia. So there's always been a weather superstition, people willing to believe. So when Al Gore and the United Nations and the media peddle this nonsense, there is, it is deeply ingrained in people to believe that they can control the weather or that odd things control the weather. And I, I directly link it. I have an MIT scientist who actually says, back in the Middle Ages, women were accused of witchcraft. They were actually accused of changing the weather and of crop failure. Now, the, and they were actually tried, and this is, the true, this is the shocking part, Mike. They were tried, the witches were tried by a panel of judges educated at Harvard University wow. in Massachusetts. So now, he said, not much has changed in our current day. People believe our SUVs and our thermostat on home setting your energy or your appliances are controlling the weather. So this is where we are. So in the book, I lay it out very simply. Climate is controlled by hundreds of factors. I interviewed top scientists, a Nobel Prize winning scientist endorsed the book. It is not carbon dioxide, a trace essential gas that humans exhale from our mouth. We inhale oxygen. Carbon dioxide is not a pollutant and it is not a control knob of climate. 
Therefore, controlling carbon dioxide, which is the bureaucrat's dream, will not impact the climate. Hundreds of other factors from tilt of the Earth's axis to water vapor to methane to cloud cover to volcanoes to uh, the solar system to the sun uh, to ocean cycles. And I go into some of that to show people that it is not us exhaling. It is not our SUVs. It is not coal plants that is going to determine our future. But it, sadly, it is the solutions they are proposing, which are the great threat to our future. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I want to I want to get to that in a, in a second here. But but first, one of the main points you mentioned is this this kind of mass hysteria or this. Yeah. It seems like people who believe in climate change, they decide to filter all of their reality through that belief, which they never question. And we see this in the scientific arenas. You know, I I, I manage a large staff, over 50 writers and editors, and I'm always assigning stories uh, from medical and science studies, and I'm seeing them every day where they say, oh, climate change caused this ladybug to overpopulate in this crop area. Oh, climate change changes the microbes in a coral reef or whatever. And it and, and they get into crazy stuff, like you said. Oh, climate change makes people angry, and that's why uh, there's going to be a civil war. It is like, really? Or climate change affected the the fertility of this subgroup in, the, in, in Africa somewhere. And it's like, and then they go, well, climate change caused this mass human migration 1,500 years ago or something. And, and then I go, wait a second. Isn't the whole theory of climate change supposed to be that the combustion engine released all this carbon dioxide causing the climate to change? Now you're saying it happened before the invention of the engine? Yeah, in fact, there's a study out saying that the human species came about during an era of global warming many millions of years ago. So. You know, first of all, global warming used to be called during the Middle Ages, the medieval warm period, was called the medieval climate optimum. Now they used to use the word optimum. Right. That was before they decided they couldn't they couldn't allow that to continue in the database. So in 2001, the new United Nations climate report came out, and it directly contradicted the 1990 report, which showed the medieval warm period much higher than current temperatures. Now they show the medieval warm period gone. This was Enron accounting. If you're trying to sell your company and you've been losing money for a decade, hey, hire a new accountant, go back through your books, show record profits. Suddenly you'll be a great company. That's what they did. They went back, they altered the data, they got rid of the medieval warm period, and they made us fear warmth. Warmth equals life. You, you know, look at the equator. Plant animal species thrive. The further you way you go to the poles where it's cold, the less animal plant species you have. You know, you, you've nailed it. I, I've had the exact same point, and I've made this argument in my own podcast and videos as well. Why should we have a frozen cold planet where water is locked up in ice and we have deserts and we have, uh, you know, ex ex extreme weather of it? Why not have a warmer planet with more liquid water, which would support more growth and rainforests and jungles and food crops? Why does anybody believe that we should have a frozen dead world with no CO2 where everything would die? That's that's called green. It isn't green. It's a frozen ice ball. It is. In fact, Bill Nye, the science guy who I feature in the book, he actually is open to jailing climate skeptics for not believing in it because they're affecting, quote, his quality of life. Uh, he actually has said that because of our human emission of CO2, carbon dioxide, we may have prevented the next ice age. Other studies have shown that. If you actually believe that we are a control knob and Mark, we do have we gotta, a huge influence. Sorry to interrupt. we got to go out to break. We'll be right back after this break and continue with you, Mark, on that train of thought. This is CounterThink at Infowars.com. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Exposing the corporate media assault on your reality. It's CounterThink with Mike Adams. Welcome back to CounterThink here on Infowars.com. Mike Adams, you're a host, joined by Mark Morano today. Mark, of course, is the creator of ClimateDepot.com, the author of a best-selling book called The Politically Incorrect Guide to Climate Change. We continue our conversation with him now. Mark, uh, as we left off there before the break, we were both talking about why do these climate change people seem to want a frozen ice ball planet like they want us to live on Hoth from the Empire Strikes Back instead of a warm liquid, you know, liquid water planet that would support plant growth and reforestation and food production. What's what's the deal with that? Well, the, the gist of it is 
They've, they've basically said that all warmth is bad. They've got everyone scared of warmth. When, as I mentioned, in the past, they actually called the warm period the climate optimums. That's what you strove for. Um, and it's very hard to understand because they actually will acknowledge that if CO2 is to have this huge impact on temperature that they claim, which is not scientifically supportable, then it would actually have prevented the next ice age, which is a good thing. And then further confusing, this guy, I don't know the answer to your question, Mike, but further confusing that, is that some of the same scientists warned in the 1970s that we were going to face an ice age and we were all going to die. That's and not right. only did they warn that, but they said it was going to be, it was going to cause more war and that the bad weather we had, tornadoes and floods and droughts were caused by man-made global cooling at the time. They actually blamed before fossil fuels caused global warming, fossil fuels caused global cooling because the aerosol emissions were out were from our coal burning were blocking out the sun and causing global dimming at the time. So, I don't know. I mean, it's pretty much whatever future they're scaring us about, they claim that's the bad future. So at one point it was global cooling and an ice age, but now it's global warming. So they're making it sound as though we want cold and ice. I don't right. know. I, it makes no sense to me. I it's remember, I remember that. They, they did attack it. They, they said global cooling was going to kill us all. You can see the covers from Time magazine. And then they said now global warming is going to kill us all. And then when then the warming couldn't be correctly modeled by the software, they just called it climate change. So they're, what are they predicting then that, that, oh, temperatures could go up, temperatures could go down. Anything that changes is now climate change. And if, and if you don't uh, compel yourself to be a slave to our system of control, whatever that means to them, taxation, carbon credits, you name it, then you're anti-science. Well, that's absurd. We live in a dynamic universe. Everything's changing all the time. You can't just claim that now that's your label and that's your movement and everybody has to bow down to you because you th you've noticed things change. <laughs> that seems insane. It's exactly right. In fact, I actually have a whole chapter in the book, Climate Astrology, which details exactly what you just said. They make opposite predictions. First of all, these climate models, I have United Nations scientists admitting on the record that they don't account for half the variability in nature. And thus, they don't expect to do pretty uh, do well with any of their predictions of the future. That's point one. Point two, they don't even call them predictions. One of the lead UN scientists, Kevin Trembeth, actually says, we call these emission scenarios. These aren't predictions, wow. and we shouldn't call them that because they don't want to be held accountable when the predictions make no sense. And here's the most insidious part. If you bet on the Super Bowl and you bet on both teams to win, the next day at your office around the water cooler, you can brag, I won, I bet on the winning team. They, in my, in my chapter in the book, I literally go through dozens and dozens of major studies on both sides of the issue from the climate establishment predicting more snow, less snow, more malaria, less malaria, more hurricanes, less hurricanes, on down the line. So no matter what happens, they literally say, we predicted it. This is right. the way they get such a great track record in their minds. You've nailed it. So, so anything that happens, they just say, uh, this is because of climate change. It. Right, right, yes. and they, they predicted it. Yes. But yet at the same time, they've declared war on carbon dioxide. And I, I really want to ask you about CO2 because, you know, I, I'm a scientist. I run a science lab. I happen to know, as really all scientists do, that CO2 is a critical nutrient for plant growth. And yes. the higher levels of CO2 you have in the atmosphere, the happier the rainforests are. You get more blooming of flowers in the jungles. You get faster crop production, food production, the reclamation of deserts back into more forests or fields. And in fact, CO2 is at one of the lowest levels it's been in the history of the planet, even though it's rising slightly right now. It's still very low compared to where it, it could be. And yet they say CO2 is a poison and a pollutant, but we would all die without it. We would be yeah. dead without CO2 in, in the atmosphere. It gets so weird. You have Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, this is a guy who did a private commute and his jet to the governor's mansion because he didn't want to live there to Sacramento. So he flew private daily jet, owned Humvees. At the same time, he flew all around the world, had multiple homes, wearied into the Kennedy family, one of the oversized carbon footprints you can imagine. As governor, he did addresses from the governor's mansion to the citizens of California, how they can lower their carbon footprint, including air drying their clothes out on clotheslines. Now, this <laughs> is where it just, this is where it just gets uh, absolutely crazy because Carbon dioxide, Arnold Schwarzenegger believes it's a pollutant. Do you know why? And do you know how? He went on twice now, and I document this in the book. He comes out and he says, if people don't think carbon dioxide is a pollutant, they should strap their mouth to the end of a car tailpipe and see how long that's, they last. That's carbon he, monoxide. 
monoxide. He's got it confused. Yes, which is a deadly poison. So yeah. this is where Arnold Schwarzenegger is. And then beyond even being confused, he actually says skeptical politicians ought to strap their mouth. He's now, he's now the Terminator, wants to terminate climate skeptics. And Bill Nye wants to jail him. Other people compare us to you know Holocaust deniers and all kinds of they try to come up with all kinds of nasty phrases to smear us because they want us they want to beat us into submission. Well, this is where it gets really dangerous, Mark, and this is why your voice is so important in, in this show and Infowars in general, because these people, these people pushing this fraudulent science, this quackery, uh, are saying that those who question their dogma must be put in prison or must be yeah. killed or, or are justified to be murdered. And this is this is shocking. They're talking about that they can justify violence against people like you and I because they claim that it, if we don't do anything, then everybody's going to die on the planet. Well, it's, it's nonsense. It's just yeah. talk about mass hysteria combined with weird left wing violence. They are they are the danger to society, not carbon dioxide. I mean, that's the whole point of this is their solutions are the danger. They are the danger. Uh, in fact, Bill Nye on his show promoted the idea with one of his uh, guests that we should have the basically people will have to uh, go to the government to get permits to have kids because kids are a devastating impact on the earth and its climate. Al Gore uh, went to a Bill Gates event and lamented that there's going to be projected that Africa is going to outpace China, India combined literally warning about people of color in Africa being too populous. And his next line is, we need ubiquitous fertility management in order to keep African numbers down. Whoa. What white, <laughs> what white conservative politician could get away with that? Al Gore gets away with it, basically right. saying there are too many black Africans and we need fertility management to keep them in check. And by that, they mean depopulation and they mean forced infertility, which we've covered in other episodes, by the way. There are, there are many infertility uh, tactics being used, and they do tend to target people in Africa at the moment. But I guess, I mean, that's, that's a different topic. I, let me ask you about this. You have been death threatened by thousands of people. They're, the death threats against you are heinous. I'm going to tr try to clean this up a little bit, but you get emails from people from email addresses like fu at idiot dot die that, <laughs> that call for you. What do they say? You and your children should be burned in public. They say these are the people who think that they're saving lives on the planet, but they want to burn you in, in public. They say, I hope that I hope that they hang you and the rest of the stooges for the fossil fuel industry say these people who are probably driving around cars and, and flying on airplanes anyway. So they <laughs> talk about contradiction. But why is why do you think there's such vile hatred and, and threats of violence against you? Well, it's a very simple concept. You have the United Nations, the mainstream media, a couple key leaders uh, and environmental groups basically saying we are all going to die and we need government and legislation, the EPA and UN, to save us. We need to legislate our future weather and climate and storms. And these bad guys over here, the climate deniers, the evil deniers, are stopping it. And they're going to cause more floods and droughts and hurricanes. I mean, they literally say the people stopping government action on future climate change and on stopping storms now are the evil ones. So I've had people who go see some of these. I've been in, I've been negatively portrayed. I've been played the villain in many different documentaries by the climate of activists. Of course. And uh, I'm, sorry to interrupt, Mark. We got to go to break again. Of course you're the villain because you're the one that's questioning the establishment. We'll be right back on counterthink.com and continue this with Mark Morano. Prepare to discard your mental blinders. Counterthink with Mike Adams is now live on infowars.com. Continuing our conversation here on Counterthink with Mark Morano of ClimateDepot.com. Mark, uh, this is our last segment with you. And again, I want to thank you for joining us today. It's, it's, it's been a very exciting conversation. But let me ask you about the mass indoctrination of children. They've been using the public school system to not teach children how to think for themselves, but rather to brainwash them and propagandize them with all of these lies that are, are provably lies, but they fit the, the narrative of the climate change alarmists. Uh, what's in future for, it, what's the future for in our society if we have a whole generation of children who grow up believing all these false lies that are, that are taught to them in the name of science, even though it's not real science? 
Yeah, excellent question. This is one of the things, if you look at the polling data, let's just start, and I'm talking about mainstream polling data, like Gallup, Pew, and other ones. They show that the one of the biggest believing segments of our population in the climate scare are children up until through college. So from kindergarten through college, they are indoctrinated nonstop. The most skeptical group are senior citizens. Now, it just, it's that old adage, you know, if you're not an idealist and falling for this when you're young, if you're not conservative by the time you're 40, you have no brain. I mean, that, this is where we are with this. And so they, they, they indoctrinate these kids. We have a collegiate group. And just in the last five years, the young college kids, even conservative college kids, college Republicans recently came out and supported a carbon tax. I believe one of the national chapters or the national chapter or some that you know, came out and supported it. Young people are buying this and falling for it because they know no different. I testified at Common Core Educational Standards in West Virginia. They were going to teach that there was absolutely no dissent in the scientific community, that this was all foregone conclusion, that Al Gore and the UN had spoken and that this was a done issue. And we were able to reverse that in West Virginia, but that's because it's probably more open to that. Other states in the Northeast, you're never going to get anywhere. There's, so kids are being indoctrinated. And interestingly enough, uh, when, they, when this indoctrination happens, kids are having psychological problems. And I go through that. P kids can't sleep at night. Kids are having great anxiety. Kids want to turn their parents in because they're not being good eco-citizens. They're being taught to basically be kid climate cops against their parents. And they're doing videos, shameless videos. Al Gore used kids for, to promote his sequel kids and they have the kids being terrified and that's a good thing because it leads to action it's it's almost a kind of a brand of intellectual terrorism i mean they're literally driving terror and fear into these children but i think that's because the social engineers know that fear is a very strong way for globalists and elitists to manipulate people into making irrational decisions if they can be told that oh you're all gonna die unless you go along with this then that actually is a very powerful form of manipulation when you say it's almost i mean it, this is not a, a a war about science this is a psychological warfare on our children right i mean is it, that it, accurate yes in fact i have a leonardo dicaprio in my book i have him quoted as saying we got to get kids young al gore's producer Lori david said i want you to grow up to be activists this is their stated goals and this is what they're trying to achieve and then it's not just education it's our culture our movies National Geographic, Earth Day, uh, the kids cartoons for kids three, four, five years old. They're all promoting this idea that people are bad. And, and there's recently, uh, and, and the sequel to the film we're working on, we interviewed people who actually kids are wishing they were never born because they feel like they've burdened the earth. They're buying oh all this propaganda that they're harming the earth and they'll break down in tears. They, they feel useless and they're upset that they're even on the earth because they're burdening our resources. Well, according to leftists, it's never too late. They do support post-birth abortion. So <laughs> That's right. I, I guess I guess maybe they're going to call <laughs> for all the children to line up and commit suicide in the name of saving the planet or some insanity like that. I mean, that's obviously that's... that's uh, it sounds a little far-fetched, but, you know, you can't put anything past these people. But let me ask you this, though. Um, what about, you know, President Trump has been able to counter the Paris Climate Accord, for example. Uh, he's put Scott Pruitt in the EPA, who is attempting, I, at least my understanding, is to bring more scientific transparency to the, to the decisions, the regulatory decisions by the EPA, which under Obama declared a carbon dioxide to be a pollutant, which is insane. So uh, in your opinion, is, is Trump helping to fight against some of the scientific lunacy that is fueling this climate change hoax? Interesting. Trump's budget was a sight to behold, his proposed budget. It was awesome. He was going to cut one third of the EPA budget. They were going to gut all this climate nonsense. He was going to go after other. And then what happens? Donald Trump meets up with Republicans in the Senate and Congress, and it's dead on arrival, unfortunately. So unfortunately, we can't do anything about the funding. I don't think that's even possible with our current House and Senate. However, what Donald Trump has done is what no other Republican president, save Ronald Reagan, would have done. And, and I, I'm very clear on this. McCain, Romney, Dole, George W. Bush, George H. W. Bush. It's so nice to have a non-Bush Republican in the White House. This is what we're doing. What Donald Trump has done is phenomenal, stood up to the world. What Donald Trump did this past week was phenomenal. The UN has already got a new UN climate treaty. Uh, they're calling it an environment, uh, Earth uh, Environment Treaty, which is going to go on top of the UN Paris Agreement, have real enforcement teeth. And the US was out of 143 to five nations. We were one of the five nations to vote against it. 
So Donald Trump is standing tall, but it's all un it's all reversible, sadly, by the next president. And if that next president is a weak Republican like a Kasich or, uh, or you know, or a Jeb Bush, we go all right back in. Mitt Romney, by the way, was begging Donald Trump up to the minute that he withdrew from the U.N. climate agreement to stay in. That is how the Republican establishment views this. Donald Trump is a anomaly for the Republican Party in a good way. It well, is a refreshing sight to have a president like this. It's extraordinary that there's there's so much political pressure to keep us in these, these so-called treaties and these climate accords, things like that. But if you really think about it, it's because that system allows the government bureaucrats and elitists to exert a tremendous amount of control over the population. Yeah. Wouldn't wouldn't you say that it's a control mechanism for the world it's, citizens? Yes, he who controls carbon dioxide controls uh, controls just about every possible thing because we're all based on that. He who controls climate controls the world, essentially. And they openly talk about global governance. That's what they're seeking. Our, our climate bills, which failed, which failed back when Obama was president, we're actually, Al Gore called them the first step to global governance. This is what they're seeking, global carbon taxes, a CO2 budget for every man, woman, and child on the planet. I interview, and I have in the book, the UN climate chief, Christina Figueres, who's now stepped down, but she said she seeks a, quote, centralized transformation that will make life on planet Earth very different, in quotes, that's in order to fight global warming. That is what they are seeking. We actually have a president standing up to that unapologetically, and you can't say that about most of the other Republicans out there. That's true. Very true. Well, well Mark, it's it's been really fascinating talking with you. I want to encourage our viewers to visit your website, climatedepot.com. Your book is also available at the InfoWars store. That's InfoWarsStore.com. It's called The Politically Incorrect Guide to Climate Change. Uh, it's, been, it's been sold out in its third printing already. People are buying this. Every <laughs> that's parent great. Kid from kindergarten through college needs a copy. It's the ultimate reference book. Absolutely. And it's entertaining. And, and, and look, Mark, let me just say uh, before you sign off here, you know, thank you for having the courage and having your voice and speaking out. We need more people like you to challenge the, the nonsense that they're pushing out there. So, you know, never, never let them beat you down. I know you don't, but just, just keep on with your voice. Keep writing books. Keep producing documentaries. You're, you're ultimately going to be proven correct, even by the consensus sooner or later. Thank you. Yeah, even all the new studies are showing they're all just retreating from all that UN scary predictions. Every new study seems to bring them back down to down and down, down, down. They, they, the scare is fading. Ab absolutely correct. Well, thank you for joining us uh, on Counterthink, Mark. Uh, I hope to talk to you again in the near thank future. You. Well, that was Mark Morano, everybody from climatedepot.com. He's obviously got a, a lot of valuable information to share with the world about climate change. I encourage you, you know, this, this show is called Counterthink. I encourage you to think for yourself. So on any issue, whether it's climate change or federal reserve or, you know, fiat currency, global debt, government, science, medicine, anything, think for yourself and don't believe those systems, those controllers that are trying to silence voices like Mark Morano or myself or Alex Jones for that matter. When someone is trying to silence voices instead of listening to those voices and being willing to debate them based on facts, then you know you're in the middle of really a kind of a science scam. And that's what we're seeing with climate change right now. They're just pushing this science scam. They're not willing to uh, debate anyone really on the facts. And they just want you to basically surrender your future and surrender your children to, you know, to their demands. And their demands are, are, are very authoritarian, by the way. You talk about authoritarian science. That's what climate change really is. It's a way to control you. It's a way to suppress your ability to think. It's a way to suppress your freedom, to take away your liberty, to control na national economies. And we are here to fight against that right here at Counterthink. And that's why this show is growing in popularity. Please share the episodes. They're broadcast 6 p.m. Central Time each Sunday at Infowars.com. They're also posted after that at Counterthink.com. My name is Mike Adams. I'm the host of Counterthink. Share our episodes, spread the word, and we will challenge the status quo at every opportunity. Thanks for watching today.